What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome back to another episode of On The Couch or Trap. This is episode four, and today we're talking about things you need to know when dealing with print shops and manufacturers, man. Tap in. It's definitely, definitely some things y'all need to understand when getting into the coding space. So this video is really going to be based on giving y'all some pointers and some insights on what you need to know when you're getting inside the coding space, when you're dealing with print shops like myself, my company, anything customs, or any other print shop across the world, or any other manufacturer, whether they in the United States or they overseas. It's certain things that you need to have in place and that you need to know so your process can go smoother with less hiccups and less trouble for both of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, if y'all tap in and have any questions doing the thing, leave the questions in the chat box. Make sure you leave your comments, leave your questions. We're going to um, address the questions on live. We're going to ask as many questions as we can. Um, you know, that's what we're doing. So, getting started, man. To me, personally, of my experience dealing with uh, customers at my print shop, one of the most important things that you need to know when dealing with a print shop is artwork. Do you know what a vector file is? You know the vector. You know what vector art is. Do you know what um, a PNG file is? Do you know what a PDF file is? Um, all of these different file types, JPEG. PNG, PDF, these are different file types. A lot of times people uh, screenshot stuff off the internet or they do this and that. That's probably going to be a JPEG if you screen printed it. A JPEG is pretty much only used for pictures. That's all it's for. It's like if you want to post a picture, it can be a JPEG. But as far as print-wise, the quality of a JPEG image is not going to be print ready so you need vector artwork vector artwork is where you use certain programs to um convert the artwork if it were if it was designed by a designer in photoshop or illustrator or anything like that then it's going to be vector artwork from the start but when you going on the on google and you finding a picture on google and you saying you want to print that that's not going to be vector artwork it's not going to be um it's not going to be a uh, 300 pixels. You know what I'm saying pixels is another thing that you need to understand. Pixels are um, like dots per inch. You know what I'm saying? So if you have an image with low resolution, that's low dots per inch. So that means when I span your picture out to print it on a shirt, when I make it big from that little phone screen picture, yeah, it look, it look good on my phone. See, it's right here. It probably do look good on your phone, your phone screen this big. But when you expand it to make it bigger to be able to print on a garment, it's going to look blurry. It's going to look pixelated. That's because you don't have enough resolution in your design. That's because you don't and, and you can't take a JPEG and stretch it out and make it big. It's not going to have a resolution. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you need the proper artwork. So artwork is the first and foremost thing that you need to understand that you need. So if you don't know what a vector art is, if you don't know what a PNG is, if you don't want to don't know what a PDF is, these are things that you need to ask whoever's designing your designs. Like, you know, make sure that I get a PNG file. Make sure that I get a vector file. Make sure I get a PDF file. If you're designing stuff yourself, on like these, they got apps, apps now, Canvas Pro, and this, that, and the third, where you can design stuff yourself. And that's cool. When you're designing stuff yourself, that's fine. But when you're designing stuff yourself, understand you need to save the design out of your program. You need to save it in a certain way. You can't just save, you can't just save the design, just save it to your phone as a JPEG and then bring it to my shop and say, hey, yo, Mitch, print this. It's not gonna work. So then when y'all wonder why print shops charge you extra art fees or this or that. Is simply because 
the foul that you giving them is not good quality. And quality matters when it comes to printing. So if you're using something like Canva and you um you uh you exporting your artwork through Canva. When you go to the settings, when it's telling you the settings that you export, make sure that you have the resolution setting, not on 72, what it might start with, turn that resolution up to 300 at the minimum. You need a 300 DPI or what, yeah, whatever, 300. The resolution needs to be 300 dots per inch. That's what DPI stands for. You know what I'm saying? So make sure that you save it at 300 DPI, make sure that you say the file type at at um BJ was good, bro. Cooling out. But yeah, make sure you say the file type at um either PDF export or PNG. PNGs are photo images that have a transparent background, which you need most of the time when you're doing DTG printing. So when we start talking about the different types of print, we're going to talk about the different types of files that's associated with them. So make sure y'all hit that like button. Make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube. It's a lot of people getting into this space and they really don't know what's going on. So make sure y'all hit that like and hit that share and let people know we're giving out free game on the couch with trap today, man. So again, when you, Getting your artwork from a graphic designer, make sure to tell that graphic designer that you want. 90% of the time, if they're a graphic designer, they should already know what you want. But you got to know what you want because they might give you anything. They might just send you the JPEG file just like a picture. And I've seen it happen where you get the JPEG file and then you come over to the shop and you like, yo, this. And I'm like, hey, who designed this for you? Did they give you all the files? And you're like, nah. So when you're paying for graphics, make sure you get the proper files. Make sure that you get the PNG file, which is the transparent file. Make sure you get the PDF file, which is the vector file. You know what I'm saying? If you possibly could, get the source files like the PSD or the AI file. That would be great too. But if they don't want to give you all those files, at least get the PNG and the PDF off the top because you're going to need those. Okay? That's, that's artwork, you know? Artwork in a nutshell is the graphic that you want printed. A lot of times people go on Google and they find images. You know, when you're just getting started, when you're just starting up your brand, you ain't you don't really know um, all the ins and outs and what's going on and what's to this and what's to that. So you might have just saw a picture of something that you like and you really just want to put that on a T-shirt. But it's not just that simple. You know what I'm saying? And another thing about artwork, a screenshot of a design on a t-shirt that's not artwork that cannot be printed from i repeat if you bring in a picture and say this is what i want in a shirt and you have a picture of a shirt with a design on that shirt that's not print ready artwork you have to have the actual design file and if you don't have a design file, the print shop is probably going to charge you art charges because they're going to have to have graphic designers. The graphics team going to have to take that picture that you showing me. And they gonna have to recreate that graphic. So when you come in with something like that, you can already expect to have an extra charge, which is going to be an art charge charged to you because they're not going to design your stuff for free. Designing is not free. Graphic design is a service. That's why when you call one of them boys like Colorful Cartel, like Zach, uh, like any other graphic designer you might call, they charge you for making it because that's their time. It's not free. Graphics can cost anywhere from 50 to 150 to two. It depends on what you want. It depends on who's doing it. Celebrity graphic designers might charge 300 for a logo. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand having been prepared when you come into a print shop is the most important thing. So you have to do your due diligence and understand what you need before walking in those doors. You know what I'm saying? So again, if you come into anybody's print shop, 
and you have a picture on your phone of a t-shirt that you've seen on the internet on Google and you screenshot that and now you want them to print that for you. Just know that they cannot print that from that picture that you've given them. So it's possible nine times out of 10, excuse me, that they're going to charge you an art charge. So don't be surprised when you get an art charge because they have to create print ready graphics for you. Now, if you want to avoid the art charge, you will come in with print ready graphics. You will come in with a PNG file, a PDF file. You'll come in with those files already like, hey, I got the files right here. I can email you over the files. How much is it to print this? And you get you skipping the step. But if you don't have those things in order, you're going to run into that art step. And that art step could cost you. I just want to let y'all know graphic design it ain't free. You know what I'm saying? It's not free with me. It's not free with nobody that I know. You know what I'm saying? So please, please um, understand that graphic designing costs money. You know what I'm saying? So that is first and foremost. Um, secondly, the second thing you need to know when uh when dealing when dealing with a print shop besides graphics if you got your graphics in order you need to understand what it is that you're trying to do you need to understand the different types of prints the different methods of print and if you don't understand the um print shop should be able to uh they should be able to help you understand you see what i'm saying they should definitely be able to help you understand. There should be no reason why they can't help you understand. But sometimes people, sometimes people are super oblivious to what's going on. They just think that, um, well, all you got to do is just do this, right? All you got to do is just do that. They be telling you all I got to do to print it. I mean, I just want this with you. All you got to do is this. And they try to make it so simple and so, so, one dimensional when it's not one dimensional when it's not so simple you got to understand that there's a lot of different methods of printing everything is not just with a heat press with some vinyl peeling or a circuit a cricket machine you know all of that stuff is not the only way to print and even doing that stuff you got to have files in certain formats you know what i'm saying when you're dealing with vinyl cutters and vinyl vinyl cutters only cut line art so that means art that looks as lines. It doesn't cut graphic design. You know what I'm saying? Like these words, these are lines. But if I get this, this right here, this is called a graphic. This is a graphic. So you got to understand that a vinyl cutter is not going to cut this out because it can't put all that detail and color and stuff. So you have to go with a different print method in order to print something like this. You see what I'm saying? So it's not cut and dry. It's not one thing fits all it's not just hey i want to get some printed and this is how you do it so be aware of the different type of print methods we're going to talk about a few right now the most common print method that people are into today is vinyl printing vinyl printing if you want to start a brand if you want to start a clothing brand or a custom t-shirt business vinyl is the easiest and cheapest entry point so if you're looking for the lowest cost way to get into print, the lowest cost way to produce your own merch, it's going to be vinyl. You can get into vinyl with a Cricut machine that's probably like $300 in a $200 or $300 heat press. So you got $600 and you win the game. But you have to understand the limitations that vinyl has. Vinyl has strengths. Vinyl has weaknesses. One of the strengths about vinyl is it's a lot of different colors of vinyl. It's a lot of different material vinyl. It's a lot of, you can do glitters, you can do reflective, you can do puff vinyl now, you can do metallic foil vinyl, um, you can do vinyl that feel like suede, called flock. Um, it's a lot of different vinyl. You can do vinyl that change colors in the sunlight. It's a lot of different vinyl you can use. But what you can't do with vinyl is make a design like this. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand with the, with the vinyl, you're limited to line artwork. But when you're getting started, 
definitely the way to go is vinyl to get in the game if you're getting in on a budget for sure. Um, the next method of printing after vinyl, you got screen printing. Screen printing is one of the oldest, one of the oldest methods of printing that's been around for years and years and years is screen printing. Screen printing is done with either machine called like a horse um, that has like a screen print machine that has like several different arms on it that hold the screens up. Um, and you can have like two, you can have four, you can have eight. Big companies got eight or 16 or some shit on there. I don't know. They got real big ones. Um, screen printing is a big learning curve. You're not just going to wake up tomorrow morning and be like, I'm a screen printer. You're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Screen printing has a lot of learning curve. It has a lot of different parameters. The first thing, and first and foremost, the process of screen print is easy once you got the screen made, but you have to make the screen first. And when making the screen, you have to use chemicals, emotions. You have to use a light room. You have to burn a thing in a screen. Uh, understand what you're doing. You have to understand. So if you're thinking about getting into screen print, you need to do your research, you know what I'm saying? Because with screen print, there comes a curve of learning um, that you have to learn. But screen print is one of those methods that are 100% the way to go when you're doing bulk orders. When you got somebody come in with 100, 200 shirts, you want to do screen print. You don't want to peel 200 vinyls, first of all. Even if you could, even if it just said, uh, just trap or whatever this say right here, even if it just said that needs little words right here, if you had to peel this a hundred times sitting around doing this, it's going to get tedious. The letter's small, you steady picking it out, pulling, it's, it's going to get real tedious. It's going to get real aggravating. It's not some, you, your production rate will be slow. You ain't finna do a whole bunch of people orders that got a hundred, 200 vinyl orders. Vinyl cuts off at 25, 30. If you got more than 25 pieces, don't ask me about vinyl because we're not doing no vinyl. You know what I'm saying? So, other shops may not even do that many. You know what I'm saying? People that's hobbyists, they may do a little more because they got a lot of time on their hands. So all they're doing is sitting at home peeling vinyl anyway. But people that's running businesses, they're not doing vinyl for big orders. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not the way to go. Screen printing is the way to go for big orders. But now the limitations with screen printing is the setup fee. First of all, you have a setup fee. You have limitations on the colors you can have. So you can't have 20 different colors and what people got to understand this goes back to artwork people got to understand what colors are you see what i'm saying this is a full color design right here you see what i'm saying and if you notice that you got the browns in there but you got different shades of brown you got shading you got different shades of pink you got all of these different shades if you were screen printing this this would be 10 plus colors because it has so much different shades. So a screen printer would try to make all the pinks the same pink. They would try to make the skin tone one color brown. They would have to crush the colors because most screen printers don't want to print more than eight colors. You know what I'm saying? And if you, the customer, are have a logo like this with all these colors, you have to understand the setup fees that come with this. So a setup fee is what they charge you to get the screen ready because you have to get a screen ready for each one of these colors that you got you have to make a screen for it. so for the browns you got to have a screen for the pink for this for the white everything got to have a screen so that means you got to do that screen process burning light overnight all of this stuff you have to do that process for each screen so a company might charge you thirty dollars per color now if you have one color or two colors Screen printing is ideal. It's ideal because when you're getting 100 plus shirts, you got some big companies that can do that for four, five dollars. If you come over here to us, it might cost you six or seven dollars because we ain't as big and we ain't in the bigger market. But still, seven dollars for 100 one color shirts. You know what I'm saying? That's that's you can't do that with with vinyl. You can't charge somebody that low with vinyl. Can't charge somebody that low with DTG. It doesn't work like that. So you have to understand the difference between the methods of print and what you're doing when you print. You know what I'm saying? So screen print 
just a recap on vinyl and screen printing. Vinyl is below minimum line art. Vinyl has a lot of different effects, a lot of different textures, a lot of different things you can use, but it's not good for mass production. Screen print is great for mass production, but you limit it to the colors, and each color that you do have in it, you subject to a setup fee for each color. So you have to have that in your budget, the setup fee. You understand what I'm saying? But now, the next method of printing we're going to talk about is DTG printing. Direct to garment. DTG stands for direct to garment. That means the print is going from the printer directly to your garment. It's not being... Uh, transferred through a screen is not being transferred through vinyl is going directly to the garment this is an example of a dtg printed shirt you see all of these fades you would make this a full color because this is not one color gray or black this is not just black this is gray fade all type of stuff so this is an example of a dtg printed shirt you know what i'm saying dtg pros and cons Pros, the color, it don't matter if you got a hundred colors in your logo, it don't matter. The colors don't matter. You can have as many colors as you want in your logo. The price gonna be the same as if you have one color. DTG is actually not good to use with one color because the price gonna be the same if you got one color or a thousand colors. So it's better to use DTG when you got a thousand colors and screen printing when you got one color. This is what I'm saying about learning the difference between the methods of print so when you approach a print shop you already knowledgeable to know what you need to do people come here like man you do screen print and they have one shirt yeah we do screen print but how are we going to do your one shirt with that though huh you know how are we going to do that you know what i'm saying it don't work like that so if you understand before you come to the shop you're not going to come to the shop with a misunderstanding you know what i'm saying so direct the garment Colors don't matter as far as the um the cost per per piece. However many colors in your design is not going to determine the cost. A lot of times with DTG, the cost is determined by how large the design is, what size the design you got on it, or it's just a standard price. But most of the time, it's a standard price for every size up until this point. Then if you want to oversized print like a 16 by 20 where you cover the whole hoodie the pocket and all that you're going to pay more dtg requires pre-treatment and other processes so when you want to when you want to do a dtg shirt one of the reasons why the cost is what it is especially for darker garments because there's a difference between print dtg on a white shirt and print dtg on a black shirt or a color shirt for that matter when you print on colored shirts with DTG, you have to, it's no choice. You have to use, you have to use pre-treatment in order for the, the way DTG inks are made, the white ink, which is your underbase, is not going to stick to the material without pre-treatment solution on it. So that's a cost right there, the pre-treatment solution. You must have the pre-treatment solution in order to use DTG. Um, another thing is when you pre-treating a garment, pre-treating it correctly, because if you don't have the garment pre-treated correctly, then your DTG print is not gonna look as vibrant. It's not gonna look as good. So it's a must that you pre-treat your garments for DTG and you pre-treat them the right way. Um, one thing that I would say that could probably be a con about DTG is the cost of it. It's not the cheapest method of printing, especially when it comes to dark garments and using white ink because the cost of the ink is high. The cost that it costs the print shop to buy the ink for DTG is high. So that's automatically going to translate to the customer when you're using DTG. It's going to be kind of high. So yeah, the DTG can print full color. It can do all that. It don't have no, no minimums. You can come in and get one DTG shirt. 
with your graphic on it. It can be big, full over the whole shirt, full of colors. You can do that. But it might cost you $30 or $35 for that one shirt. You got to understand that. Because how much ink it's going to use, the time it takes, the pre-treatment, all that plays a factor in the price. So you might get one shirt, whereas you can't go to a screen printing guy and get one shirt. A vinyl guy can't even do your graphic because it got too many colors in his graphic. So this DTG guy, he can help you out, but it's just a little more expensive for that one piece. Now, if you were going to get 30 of those shirts, they might knock the price down a little bit. But one thing about DTG that's important, no matter how many shirts you, the customer, get, the cost to make the shirt stays the same. See, with screen printing, right? You got that initial cost, that initial time in setting it up. But after you set it up, it get cheaper the more you get. The reason why it get cheaper, because once it's set up, all you're doing is pulling ink, pulling the same ink on more. You're just pulling ink. So a screen printer can afford to do 100 shirts at $7. When a DTG person, if he told you $7, his ink costs might cost seven dollars so he's not even making nothing off the shirt so it don't matter if you was getting 50 shirts he's never going to say seven dollars only because you're getting 50 it's not going to be that because the price is still going to be the price is a standard however much it took me to do one shirt it's going to cost me the same amount to do 50 shirts however if it costs five dollars for me and ink to do one black shirt it's going to cost five dollars per shirt for me to do 100 black shirts so i can't charge you three dollars for your hundred shirts just because you got a hundred when it still costs me five dollars whether you got a hundred or not so that's the thing about dtg that you got to understand you got to understand that dtg price is standard across the board you might get a couple of dollars off like for example if you're getting one shirt i'm charging thirty dollars but if you get 20 shirts it might be twenty dollars that's with the shirt included too but you just got to understand that once the price is at its bottom line, as low as it can get, it can't get no lower, no matter how many shirts you get. Only thing we can do is switch the process. You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing about DTG that you got to understand. Direct to garment printing is cool when you're dealing with full colors. And it's basically for a print shop, it's, it's better for a person with DTG to be doing smaller runs, like you might want 10 or 12 shirts or or you might have a brand like me, right? DTG works for me because I have a brand and my, my t-shirts already sell for $30 plus, some 30 to $50 plus. So if I got a full color 16 by 20 DTG shirt out here, it's gonna be $50 for the tee. But since I have a brand, I can sell $50 tees all the time. But if you, just starting your brand and you got this complicated design you might not be able to sell the shirt for fifty dollars so why would you want to pay twenty dollars for the shirt you see what i'm saying that's why i'm saying things you need to know before working with a print shop you need to know the different types of print methods so you need to know which one is best for you you need to understand why this is best for me you know what i'm saying because you don't want to be that's why I tell brands all the time, right? They'll go to a nigga like Colorful Cartel, and he don't make a dope ass logo. I'm telling you, he go, like he gonna make some shit like this. He gonna make a dope ass logo, bro. He gonna make a colorful logo. He gonna make it's gonna be raw. But you might not can't afford to print this logo though. That's the thing. Is it in your budget to print this? So sometimes when you start your brand, when you starting off, start a little simpler. Stop going to get the most complex design with all the colors in it because you don't even understand how you're going to get that made. When I started Just Trap, I had two words, one color, four inches. Cheap. It was cheap. Everything I did was cheap to make. It was all cheap. So I could sell $20 t-shirts all day because it only cost me $3 to make them shit. $4 to make them. You see what I'm saying? But you start off with a full color design like this one right here. And then you come out, talking about you want it on black shirts, blue shirts, red shirts, you know what I'm saying? You running yourself up a check, you feel me? 
So you got to understand the difference, man. You got to understand what's going on. You got to understand the methods, you know what I'm saying? So, so far we didn't spoke on vinyl printing. We just spoke on screen printing. We didn't spoke on DTG printing. Direct to garment. Also with direct to garment, it's a thing called, that's new out. It's called direct to film. That's called DTF. That's becoming very popular because it's a little simpler and people that's getting into the game, that's a way that you could print at home full color stuff on your own with your heat press. So with a person like me with a DTG machine, we can make you DTF transfers. We can make you DTF transfers Full color, like this right here, is a DTF transfer. This right here is a DTF transfer. It's popular. If you look around right now, you see a lot of brands with a lot of DTF transfers on their hat. It's popular on hat. You can do it on clothes, whatever you want. But a DTF transfer is priced similar to how DTF, I mean, DTG print is priced. It's priced per square inch of the design. So if you got something this big right here, you might be paying $4 for it. So you got some super big, you might be paying $14 for it. But either way, once I make you these transfers, you are able to then take them home and use your heat press and put it on your garments yourself without actually needing me anymore. You just bought the transfers from me and you can apply them yourself. So you're saving money and labor right there. You know what I'm saying? Any of y'all using DTF or DTG, I mean DTF transfers, like with your brand, if not, it's definitely something to look into. We sell DTF transfers. We can help you with that. Um, we can get it done for you. We can do the DTF on the hats or the garments for you, or we can print the transfers for you and you can then put them on yourself. But DTG, DTF, those are similar full color print methods that are um, basically used for lower minimums. They're not really for hundreds of shirts. Um, you could do DTF for hundreds of shirts. You just got to pay. No matter what, it's the thing with DTF. If this size transfer 12 by 12, if it costs $14 for one, it costs $14 for 100. You might get a small break in there. Might go down to 13, but it ain't gonna be no serious break because the process is the same no matter how many you get. If you just get one, it's gonna use that amount of ink. If you get a hundred, it's gonna use that amount of ink for, for each one. So it's the same. So that's something you need to remember when dealing with DCG and DTF. You need to remember that it's price per square inch. So the bigger I want it, the more the transfer going to cost me or the more the DTG print going to cost me. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, we can move on to we can talk about sublimation really fast. We can talk about sublimation really fast. Sublimation is a print method that has become a little popular lately too. It's the method where some people are out calling it 3D printing or whatever they're calling it, but it's called sublimation printing. It's where you're printing over the entire shirt. So you see a lot of um, memorial t-shirts where they got like the clouds and then the person and the sky and all that. And they'd be like the full shirt. That's sublimation printing. Me, myself, personally, in my shop, I don't do sublimation. Um, my factory does sublimation. But I personally don't do sublimation. I may get into sublimation at one point or another. But right now, that's the type of print method we don't offer. So since I don't offer it, I will only briefly talk about this because it's not my expertise. But I do know that with sublimation, it's mostly done on polyester apparel material. I mean, so if you doing sublimation, you're not going to get a 100% cotton hoodie gonna get a polyester hoodie or a mostly polyester hoodie with a little blend in it you're gonna get a polyester t-shirt or a mostly polyester t-shirt with a little blend in it you see what i'm saying so if you um 
using sublimation, just understand that your shirt or your hoodie is going to be polyester in it. You know what I'm saying? This is how it has to be. But sublimation can do full color. Colors don't matter. Um, it can print over the whole shirt or it can print over a portion of the shirt. It can print over the front, full front, full back. I can take this whole white hoodie and have it in all the whole design. It's printed all over the shirt. That's sublimation. So we talked about vinyl, DTG, DTF, screen print, and sublimation. So after that, you got the most prestigious of them all, the most expensive of them all, the most long, longest lasting of them all, which is embroidery. It's not technically printing, but it's garment decoration. Embroidery is stitching. That's um, thread, needle, stitching a design into your shirt, garment, hat, whatever it is. Embroidery is the most prestigious way I say that because no matter how many times you wash this shirt or whatever, or no matter how beat up your hat get, you can run your hat over with a car. The embroidery is still going to be on there. The hat might be flat to the ground. The embroidery is still going to be there, though. The stitch is not just going to magically pop out or go nowhere or do nothing like that because that's not how this works. See what I'm saying? So when you're dealing with embroidery, understanding that it's the most prestigious way to print, it's also the most highest way to print, too. It's also steps involved in that. It's also certain files and artwork formats that you need in that. So when we talked about artwork earlier, I didn't mention the type of file that you would need for embroidery, which is called a DST, DST file or an EMB file. One of those two files you're going to need for all embroidery. The thing about those files is when somebody make it for you, when they send it to you through your email or to your phone, you're not going to be able to open up the embroidery file on your phone. The only thing that can read the embroidery or the DST file is a embroidery machine. Your phone can't read it. Your computer can't read it. An embroidery machine can read it. You know what I'm saying? But you need that done before you can even get embroidery. So most shops charge what's called a digitizing fee. That's the fee that it costs to get your logo digitized for embroidery. It's usually a one-time fee. And as long as you're using the same logo, you don't have to worry about paying that fee again or you know what I'm saying? None of that. It's a one-time fee. You do it. One time you get it done, you got the file. You don't have to change nothing unless you want to change the type of file or the size. Because when embroidery is digitized, it's digitized specifically for the size that you're asking for. So if you're getting something this size for a hat, only file you can use this is, is for a hat. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, most of the time, it's going to be a fee involved in that. Like, like Stay Fresh just mentioned right in the comments, a lot of times it's between 20 and I would say between 20 and $40, depending on, the, depending on the company, depending on the size. Sometimes, like when you're getting the design digitized this size for a left chest or for a pants leg or for a hat, when you're getting it digitized like that, it's probably going to be on a 20 to a 25 side. When you're getting some large, big back piece digitized, 100,000 stitches, you might be paying 50 to $75 for that digitizer because the, the more work they got to do, that's, it, it costs. Everything costs, you know what I'm saying? So if you can find you an overseas digitizer, that's going to be your cheapest. If you come, if you go to Lids right now and get some shit digitized, you're going to pay $40 for the small shit. You understand what I'm saying? If you come over here to us and get some digitized, you're going to pay 25 to 30 for the small stuff. You're going to pay 50 to 75 for the big stuff, depending on how big, how detailed, how intricate the design is, because it takes work. It takes time to do that. It's not just like you plug it in and some just do it for you. It's not that. You know what I'm saying? So understanding, you got to understand the method. That's what the point of this, this live was, to give you understanding on the methods. You know what I'm saying? So when you're dealing with embroidery, you already know, hey, when I call a shop, I want to do embroidery, I already know I'm subject to a one-time digitizing fee. And then the price of the embroidery 
Some shops got it broken down already for 10,000 to 15,000 stitches, this the cost. For 20,000 to 30,000, this the cost. For 50,000 to 100,000, this the cost. You can break it down like that. You could. It's tricky though. It's not a one way price because some design that got $75,000, excuse me, 75,000 stitches in it, it's going to be on the machine for damn near an hour, right? So a person, a company that got 18 embroidery heads, they can look at you and be like, you know what? This got $75,000, I mean, 75,000 stitches in it. So it takes me uh, an hour to do this. But they got 18 heads. So in that one hour, they're going to have 18 of your hats done or your shirts done or your jacket backs done. They're going to have 18 done in an hour. So they probably can give you a better price for embroidery than a person that got two heads or one head. Because now in an hour, I'm only getting two done in an hour. So if I'm only getting two done in an hour, you're going to hold up my embroidery machine for some hours doing your 25 pieces. You see what I'm saying? You're going to have my embroidery machine tied up for 12 hours doing that. So I might have to charge you a little bit different for the time that it's going to take to do this. Versus if a person had an 18 head and you're only doing 25, they're going to have you done in two hours. So, yeah, they can charge you. $40 when I might have had to charge you 60. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand, but either way, neither one of those shops are wrong for their price because they're pricing according to the stitch count and also the time. It's not only the stitch count, it's the stitch count and the time. So when you're dealing with a big factory or some overseas niggas in Pakistan, they got 20 embroidery heads. They're going to give you the cheapest embroidery price possible they gonna beat me every time because I can't give you fucking uh I can't give you seventy five thousand stitches for thirty dollars, bro. I can't do it. You are gonna hold up the machine too long. I, I I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah, it's time and it's labor, and it's it's, it's the stick. Really, when I say the labor is the person operating the machine. They gonna have to operate the machine for two hours when they got eighteen heads versus my labor. Gonna be 12 hours worth of labor. You see what I'm saying? Because I only got two heads, so it's gonna take me 12 hours worth of labor, plus my machine held up for 12 hours doing that. So it's gonna cost you $70 for me for that. You understand what I'm saying? Versus overseas. You understand what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta know these things when you're dealing with a print shop. It's better the more stuff you know. That way they can't tell you nothing crazy or you can't come in asking a lot of crazy shit because a lot of times people come in it'd be annoying but it really is they just don't know so they asking a bunch of wild questions that don't make sense you see what i'm saying and and, and it could get aggravating if you don't know how to deal with them as being a print shop person because sometimes you tell a person yes yeah, it cost how many stitches it is or this is the third nigga look like how many stitches what does that mean you know what i'm saying so now you gotta damn that sit a person down and give them an education on embroidery when I feel like as a brand, as a potential brand, as a clothing brand owner, clothing line owner, somebody that wants to get in that business, I feel like you need to study certain things. So when you walk into a print shop, you're not totally blind. You might not know how to print, but don't be totally blind. Don't know, don't not know nothing about nothing. Cause now you're going to be asking a whole bunch of crazy questions and you're going to be down there needing the damn, yeah, you're going to be needing a lesson. You know what I'm saying? Instead of a job, you're going to be needing a lesson. So when you learn about what you're doing, when you learn about vinyl, what vinyl capable of, what vinyl not capable of, you're not going to walk in here with a graphic design like this and tell me you want vinyl. You know what I'm saying? When you learn what screen printing is, you're going to understand that I got 100 pieces and I got a one color design. It's going to be cheap for me to get screen print done. You're going to understand that. You're going to understand that when I'm doing embroidery, I need a DTS file or EMB file before I can even start because that's all embroidery can read. You see what I'm saying? So understanding and learning and like Fresh said, knowledge is what you need to succeed when you're trying to build your brand. And that's why I, that was the purpose of this lab. It was to give you a little bit 
a knowledge and a little bit of free uh, game when it comes to dealing with a print shop. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, we touched on all of those methods of printing. Um, we touched on the types of artwork. We touched on the files. One thing I want to one thing I want to touch on before I end this live. I want to I want to I want to touch on M O Q's. M O Q. That's short for minimum quantity, minimum order quantity. I'm sorry. M minimum O order Q quantity. In layman's terms, that's the minimum amount of pieces you can order for this order. You know what I'm saying? For example, screen printing. When you walk up in my shop and say, hey, y'all do screen printing? I just need one shirt made. You automatically crossed out. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nobody screen printing one shirt. It's a minimum order quantity for screen printing. And all a minimum order quantity means is what that particular manufacturer or shop minimum before they can produce your order. So if screen print over here, we got a 15 piece minimum. That's the bare minimum. So you're going to get the highest price now. Understand, don't think that I'm getting 15 pieces. That's both. 15 pieces, not both, sir. I'm going to tell you, look in both cameras, this one and that one. 15 pieces is not both, sir. That's the minimum. 15 pieces when it comes to screen printing, that's like getting one piece. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. You're not at the top. It's not both. Okay? So stop thinking that I'm getting 15 shirts like you're doing it big. No. You're starting off where you need to start off at. Okay? But don't think that's both. So don't be surprised when somebody tell you, hey, it's not both, bro. It's not. It's the minimum. That's it. Embroidery. I know embroidery companies that don't do less than 12 pieces. You know what I'm saying? Most people don't do less than the amount of heads that they have on the embroidery machine. So if a nigga got six heads, the minimum going to be six. Because when I turn this machine on, I need all six of these running at one time. I don't need to turn the machine on and three of them running. You do see what I'm saying? And they, when, when I do do three, I'm going to charge you more for that three because you're not meeting the minimum. So, yeah, with embroidery, I, I possibly can go under the minimum, but it's going to cost you more. You see what I'm saying? So if a, if a company telling you they got a 12-piece minimum, nine times out of ten, they smallest machine is 12 heads, okay? So they're not doing less than 12 pieces. When you come to me, sometimes I bend and break because I only got two heads. So my minimum really is two right now. I'm finna get more. So then the minimum going to be six. Or as long as I got that two-head machine, though, I can always do a minimum of two. But every now and then I bend and I do one piece for a person. But when I do one piece for a person, it's cost. that's a sample now. Sample prices now. So you might pay 40 for the hat now. You want one, you might pay 40. Just like you're going to go to the list and do that. You see what I'm saying? Plus, you got to understand that 90% of the time, you finna come pay $30 to get the logo digitized. So you only want one hat, you finna pay $30 for digitizing and $40 for the embroidery. You had $70 for the hat. You might as well get your six pack, bro. You know what I'm saying? You might as well get your six pack. It just... But that comes with knowledge and knowing what you're dealing with before you go in the shop. So when you get with a factory like these Pakistan people, these overseas people, especially China, China more stricter than Pakistan. The difference between China manufacturers and Pakistani manufacturers is Pakistan thirsty, China no thirsty. Okay, no thirsty for China. They don't. If you don't spend with them, they're gonna they're not gonna be calling you every five minutes. They're not gonna be in your inbox like, sir. Did you you mean, you, you, they're not going to be doing all that. Pakistan people, third world shit. They looking for money. So they're a little more persistent and a little more lenient. Dealing with some middleman Pakistani nigga that's inboxing everybody. He going to do it damn near whatever you say because he's trying to get some business. But 90% of the time when you're dealing with a manufacturer like that, your order not going to be right, especially if you don't know no better. If you don't got no tech packs, if you don't got no um complete descriptions if you don't got no size charts things like that 
If you just tell a Pakistan nigga, man, I want to get 12 track suits and you just send them the money, you understand what I'm saying? And you think they going to make your track suits how they supposed to be, then when you get them back, they fitting a 3X fitting like a medium? Because Pakistan people body 3X different. They body ain't the same. Chinese people body different. Chinese small. So all the Chinese stuff cut different. So if you let them go off they Chinese shit, it's not going to be right. And sometimes they say, yeah, I got an American size chart. That's a toss up. So this is a thing you need to know when you're dealing with a manufacturer. You need to know that the more details you got, the more information you can provide, the more stuff you can provide, the less chance of problems. Because you leave it all up to them, you're going to lose some money. I can tell you that right now. You're going to lose some money. Okay? So when dealing with manufacturers, understand the minimum quantity order. Ask them, hey, what's the minimum quantity? Ask them, hey, I need a sample. You know why you need a sample? Because you want to make sure that everything going to fit how you want it to, the fabric going to be right, this and that, especially if you ain't got no tech pack. And if you don't know what a tech pack is, let me tell you what a tech pack is. A tech pack is a manufacturer document that shows exactly what it is you're looking for. So if you got a hoodie, right, on your tech pack, it's going to show the cut of the hoodie. It's going to show the chest measurements. It's going to show the width. It's going to show the length. It's going to show the sleeve part. It's going to show the lift of this. It's going to show everything. It's going to show how big the hoodie is. It's going to show if it's going to have white strings. It's going to have red strings. It's going to be a two-tone hoodie. Is it going to be one? Is it going to be double stitching? Is it going to be single? All that information going to tech pack. But I guarantee you, if you got that right and you send it over to them, one thing they can do is follow directions. But if they don't got no directions, you leaving it up to them. And then don't be surprised when your merch come back and it ain't what you was looking for because you wasn't prepared. So I ain't saying you got to have a tech pack for everything you do because I didn't did shit without tech packs. I know Stay Fresh didn't did stuff without tech packs, but I'm guaranteeing you all of us got some stories about stuff we didn't did without tech packs. You understand what I'm saying? Who do you get a tech pack from or do you make it yourself? I mean, it's professional people that make tech packs. It's professional people that really do this, that really do it the right way. You could attempt to make it yourself, but if you're not knowledgeable, if you don't know how long a sleeve is or how long it's supposed to be or how wide it's supposed to be, if you don't know that, you should hire a professional. If you don't have the money to hire a professional, let me tell you some secrets on what you should do coming from the couch with trap. You want to do a Nike, you want to do a tech fleece suit that's like Nike, right? Oh, you love the way that Nike tech fleece feel. What you think you should do? You should go find the measurements of a Nike tech suit, a real one. You should go on Nike. You should find a tech suit that you like. You should go to where it got the description and the fitting, the sizes and the measurements. And you should copy that. You should screenshot that. And that's what you should send to your manufacturer. You see what I'm saying? You 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 go find something that you know you like. You know what I'm saying? And you mimic that. That's the cheapest way to get it. But guess what? You can still have a few tweaks that you might have to make in there. That's why you get a sample. But that's a great starting point. But now the actual tech pack, you're going to need a professional designer that knows how to do it. I don't make tech packs. It's not, it's not nothing I do for myself. You see what I'm saying? You, you see, stay fresh in the comments, giving out free game. That's how he made all his sweatsuits using Nike measurement because he knew that he liked the way Nike sweatsuits feel. So if I know I like the way Nike sweatsuits feel, I like the way Nike sweatsuits fit, let me go find Nike sweatsuit measurements. Let me go look around on Nike. But one thing about this clothing shit, if you're scared to do the research, if you're scared to get out here and get your thumbs dirty from and your eyes watery from looking at the computer all day or staring at your phone, and you, th you think the answer is going to fall out the sky, they not. 
know what I'm saying? So you got to understand that you got to look for this information. You got to put that leg work in or you can leave it up to Pakistan and get your shit tight. One leg squeezing, the other leg baggy, all type of weird shit. You know what I'm saying? But the way you do it is find something you like and you mimic that size until because somebody might charge you three hundred dollars to do a tech pack for you. Somebody might charge you one seventy five. Somebody might charge you five hundred. The cheapest place to find a professional tech pack free game Fiverr.com. Type in clothing tech pack. That's going to be the cheapest way. Because if you find a nigga like one of these American niggas that do it, they're going to crack you in the head. Okay? Head will be cracked quick. Because it's, it's work involved. But when you go with some overseas Pakistan nigga that doing this shit, off fiber, they're going to do it for $175 or $75 or whatever. And you might find somebody doing it for 50 You know what I'm saying? But you got to know you gotta know where to look. You know what I'm saying? But the, the, the cheapest way is doing it yourself by going to mimic somebody like Nike or a polo or whoever you like. You know what I'm saying? If you like the way, if you like the way a Lacoste tee fit on you, go to Lacoste and look at their tee measurements. Look at they fitting their size chart. Send them that. One thing about Lacoste and stuff like that, they're not going, they're not going to tell you the actual material blend. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell you up there every single blend of the material. So you're going to have to take your chances with that. But they will tell you how the chest measurement is, how the length is, how the neck measurement. You know, they'll tell you this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that way you got to cut. You know how to cut. Now you got to figure out the material. There might be some more research you got to do. But when you're getting into this, if you ain't doing no research, bro, if you're waiting for somebody to tell you, if you're waiting for a nigga to sit on the couch like Trap doing right now and give you the answers, you might be waiting forever. Because, nigga, I just started giving out answers. I've been doing this shit for seven years. I just started sitting right here giving this shit out. You know what I'm saying? So you might be waiting for a long time. So go out and do the research, man. One thing, one most important thing that you need to know when dealing with manufacturers or print companies is do the research. You know Hit that like button, share this shit, man, subscribe. My hour is coming to an end. I'm going to probably do a part two of this because I can talk about this for a while. I'm probably going to do On the Couch with Trap, Things You Need to Know, part two. You know what I'm saying? I might even bring somebody up here to talk with me about this shit because this is a large topic that people need to know about. And definitely, like bro saying in the comments, don't be scared to take risks. And when a nigga say take risk, take the risk to do some research. Take the risk to Google some stuff. Take the risk to go look into what you're doing and get some knowledge first. And then present your stuff to a print company. And then present your stuff to overseas manufacturers. Because I'm going to tell you like this. When you're dealing with China, they're going to eat your ass up if you don't know. They gonna be, they gonna have you feeling slow. They gonna have you feeling like you gonna hang it up because them niggas not playing. They serious and they dealing with people every day. So if you're not prepared, they're gonna, they're gonna eat you alive, bro. So make sure you prepared, man. Proper preparation prevents poor performance, man. Remember that, man. And um, remember to hit that like button, share this video. It's gonna be up there. If you got some more questions, man, comment. And that's that, man. It's another episode of On the Couch of Trap, man. Episode four, things you need to know when dealing with a print shop or manufacturer.